Hey, what's up? Today I'm gonna be doing a gear setup video. There's tons of different ways to set your gear up. So I'm gonna show you what's been working for me. I do have a lot of personal gear. So for this video, I'm gonna stick to all issued equipment. If I'm your favorite combat arms instructor, don't forget to subscribe. So I was recently issued this belt. So I realized not everybody has one. So I'm gonna do the video with the belt and then I'm gonna do it without the belt. So the thing I like about the belt is it takes a lot of the weight off your vest if you have all your gear on your vest. So I fire with my right hand. So the right side of my body, I'm gonna consider my weapon side. And then the left side of my body, I'm gonna consider my support side. That is important to know because whenever I'm setting up my gear, there are things I wanna keep on my support side, such as magazines or even a taser. Reason why I don't want to put my magazines on my weapon side is because if I need to reload, I don't want to be reaching across my body for a magazine. It's easier and more efficient if I could just reach down with my support hand and reload that weight. A reason why you don't want to put your taser on your weapon side is because if your adrenaline is pumping and you need to taste somebody, you don't want to accidentally reach for your weapon and then shoot that person. That has happened in the past and I'd rather learn from other people's mistakes than make that mistake on my own. So this is my vest. Inside are two ballistic plates, that one in the front, one in the back. This is how they look. They're made to stop high-speed shrapnel and a number of different size rounds. The plates aren't huge, but they're meant to protect your vital organs in the event you get shot. So whenever an armorer issues you your equipment, you want to make sure everything is good to go. So for your M4 mags, you want to make sure you have the proper amount of magazines and then you want to make sure they are full so you'll press check them by pushing down to make sure there are 30 rounds in there. You want to do that for each and every magazine. For your M18 or your M9 magazines, you want to make sure that your magazines are full so if they are full you'll see the round on the 21 or the 17 depending what you have. You want to make sure your baton works. And then you want to make sure your radio turns on and is fully charged. If it's not, you can just turn it back in and it'll give you a new one. So once your stuff is good to go, now it's time to load it into your gear. I'm going to start with the M4 mags, so I have seven. One will go on my weapon, and then the other six will go on my gear. So whenever I load up my mags, I'll have the rounds facing towards my weapon side. The reason why I have my rounds facing towards my weapon side is because that is how I was taught and then I've been training like that so I have the muscle memory built. So if I need to reload, I'll just reach down, move the bungee cord out the way, take the magazine out, rotate it into my weapon, and then continue on with my business. I have three more magazines. Now it's time to load them into my belt. Whenever I load them into my belt, I'm gonna have the round facing to the rear. So if I need to reload, I'll just reach down, grab the magazine, rotate it up into my weapon, and then continue on with my business. So next on my pistol magazines, one will go with my weapon, so I'm gonna put that aside for now. And the other one will go in my gear. I'm gonna have the round facing towards my weapon side. So if I need to reload, I'll reach down towards my belt line and then reach back until I reach a magazine. And then I'm gonna take that magazine, rotate it into my weapon, and then keep firing. Next is my baton. I usually keep that on my weapon side. So let's take that, put it in there. So if I need to grab it, I'll just grab it, pull it out, do what I gotta do. So this vest that I'm issued has two built-in pouches. One on my support side, that's why I keep my tourniquet. 
And then on my right side, that's why I usually put my radio. So typically I'll have a mic. So I'll just put my mic on my radio, wrap it around, and then have my mic right here. And then behind that, I keep this clear. I don't put any pouches here because I don't want to draw my weapon and have something obstruct my draw. On the back of my bed, I have my plexi cuffs. A few years ago, I was in a location that didn't authorize the use of handcuffs. So we were issued plexi cuffs instead. And they're a really great substitute, especially if you're detaining bigger individuals where handcuffs may not fit. And to pull that out, I'll just reach to the rear and pull out my plexi cuffs. All right, moving down is my handcuffs. I keep that on my weapon side. Behind my handcuff pouch, I have this area clear. That way nothing is obstructing my draw. I keep my holster at a 90 degree angle. And I have this thigh strap, which one helps me draw my weapon straight up. And then it also helps keep my holster secure whenever I'm moving around. Behind that, I have a pouch where I keep all the things I don't necessarily need on a daily basis. And here are its contents. I have some gloves, flashlight, glow sticks. For my multi tool. Herring Pro. Another Herring Pro. Some gloves in case I need to administer first aid or if I'm searching a suspect, I wanna keep myself nice and safe. Then I have a right in the rain notepad and then a right in the rain pen. So here's the bag I take with me in case I need to post out. The very top I have my helmet. It's a Team Wendy helmet. One thing I like about it is whenever you put it on, you could fasten it. Then I have my MVGs. So this is a night vision device, lets me see in the dark. I fire with my right hand, so I'm gonna keep my MVGs on my non-dominant eye. My rifle has a sling, has an ACOG. The ACOG has a four time magnification. And I keep it to the rear because I wanna get a good eye relief. This is how a proper eye relief looks. And then if my ACOG was too far forward, I'll have an improper eye relief, and this is how it will look. So I keep my ACOG right back here. So on top of the ACOG, there's tritium. If you have too much exposed, whenever you look to the site, there's a chevron. It gets really bright. So just to limit that brightness, I'll put a piece of tape up there. Moving forward, I have my PEC-15. It has two capabilities, one, it has a red dot. The other capability it has is an infrared laser. So the infrared laser is not visible to the naked eye. So you need to put some MVGs on. And this is how it looks when you're shooting with MVGs and your PEC-15. Okay. And then I have a pressure pad on the left side. So if I need to turn something on, I'll just make sure it's on and hit the pressure pad. And on the bottom, I have a flashlight. It has two settings. It has a IR flashlight and then just a regular white light. One thing I like about this setup is if they tell me, hey, you're getting a 203 today, all I need to do is take off this bottom rail and then just put my tool down there.
So this is the way you can set your gear up if you don't have a belt. If you notice, everything is the same as far as weapon side and then support side. I put my M4 magazines up front here. You could also put them on the side. My pistol magazine is on the front here. It's still my support side. My baton and my radio are in the same spot on my strong side. I did get rid of this accessory pouch because when I put it on this gear, since it's higher, it's harder to reach. So a consideration is putting it in your bag. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh.